Okay, so today's video is talking about how to build custom response objects. So every time you make a fetch call, you're requesting something from the server. You're sending a request, you're getting back a response. That response is going to contain some file, um, or it could just be a status code you're getting back, like a 404 status code. Hey, that file doesn't exist. So there might not be a file there, but you're getting that status code telling you that, hey, the response is empty. It has no body. If the response has a body, that is the file that's coming back from the server. So it could be an image, an HTML file, a CSS file, could be any type of file that you want, but there is a response object. Normally that's handled by the browser. So you do a fetch call. You're asking the browser on behalf of JavaScript to send a request to get a response back. And then you want to use that response for things. It is also possible for us to create our own custom response objects. So we can build a response object and we can put a file that we want inside of there. Why would we want to do this? Well, if you have a response object, it means I can put a file into my cache. So using the cache API, I can save that. That file could be something that I generate. It could be something I'm getting from the user's local system. They've loaded a file. I can put it in a response object and save that. I can be using a service worker. So I'm building an offline first web app and my service worker is handling all the fetch calls. Well, maybe it doesn't have a file to send back right now, but I want to be able to send a file from my service worker back to the browser. So my service worker needs to be able to generate a response object. And that's what we're going to do right now. So jumping into our code here, simple little HTML file, We've got a little bit of minor CSS and a JavaScript file. This is the syntax right here. This is what we're going to be doing. So new response and then a body object. The body object is the first parameter. You have to have that for the response. It could be null, meaning there's nothing in there. It could be an empty string. There's no response to send back. Uh, and then there's an options object, which has three properties. Status. So this is your status code. 404, 500, 200, 302. Whatever it is, that's the status code. And this is the message that you want to send along with that. And you can put whatever message you want inside of here. The headers, these are the headers for the response. So when a web server sends a response back, when it's sending a file to you, there's headers in there and we can set some of these. So here's our basic response object that we're going to be creating. New response, that's how we're gonna create it. The body, as I already mentioned, it could be an empty string or null, but if we've actually got something, these are the different data types that can go in there. So it could be a blob. Um, I've got a video that I did recently on blobs and files. So link is up there at the top. Array buffers, typed array, data views. So this is sort of raw data. You can send that. A form data object. So this is a certain kind of formatting for all the data that would be in a form, name, value, pairs very similar to URL search parameters, which is name value pairs just formatted the way they would be in a query string. Any string that you want, just text or a readable stream object. And I'm gonna have a video coming up soon talking about readable streams. All right, so when my page loads, I've got two functions, I'm gonna call both of them. Let's start off with the create JSON response. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this down into here because we are going to use it in a moment. Now, what I want to do is I want to create an object, turn it into JSON, and then turn that JSON into a file and put it right here into my response object. So we're going to say const response is going to be that. So let's work a little bit backwards here. We'll create our object first. So my obj, and I can put whatever I want in here. It's just a plain old JavaScript object. That's good enough. So I've got an object, couple of properties, couple of values. I'm then going to turn that into a JSON string. So say that JSON equal JSON.stringify, and we pass our object in. Now what we have is a JSON string equivalent of this object. We want to have a file inside of here. 
Now I could use a blob or I could use a file. The difference between the two of them generally is that the file also has a name and a mime type attached to it. So we're going to do that. So let's say let file equal new file. It gets an array and we're going to put our JSON string inside of there. What do we want to call it? Let's say mydata.json. That's the name that we're going to give to the file. And then what type of file it is? Application slash JSON. So we're setting the MIME type of this file. And now this file, boom, there we go. We're putting that inside of there. That's going to be the response. That's the, the file object in our response. And we can look at these in the console as well. Let's take a look at our file, see what that gives us. And we can take a look at the response object to see all of its properties. Now for the headers, I'm going to add a couple. Now I can, I can leave this one here, but I'll add a couple. We've got content type. This is the MIME type for the file that's coming back. And I can take this string and put it here, or I can say this file has a type property. So that's what it's going to be. And my content length is the size of the file in bytes. And this is just going to be file.size. Okay, so there's all my headers. So let's take a look at this in the browser. There we go. So file, there's our file object. So you can see the name, the size, the type, those are all available to us in the file object. And then the response object, the body, this is actually that file. So it's got a status, status text, 200, all good. That's what we set in the headers. The headers inside of there are the ones that we're creating. Now we can take this response object. We can put that into um, the cache API, as I was saying. We can also make a copy of it. And that can be done with any response. There is a method on the response object called clone. This gives us a copy. There we go. Copy is going to be the same thing as response. It's a response object which has inside of it the file that we put in there. So this thing exists in response and also in copy. Why would we want to do that? Well, when you're dealing with responses inside of a service worker, you can't take the file and do two things with it. You can't put it in the cache and also send it back to the browser. You need to make a copy of it. You make a clone of it. So one can go in the cache and then one can go back to the browser. The clone method lets us do that. And then if you do want to see the contents of this, we can turn this into an asynchronous function. So I can use a wait. There we go. It's async. So now I can take our, well, we can take either one, take the copy or the response, either one. Response objects have these different methods. Blob, if it's a blob file, I want the JSON method. I want to extract the JSON string. So this is going to read the JSON string and give me a promise. So I have to await for it. It's going to give me the JSON string converted into an actual object. So if I write out contents like this, there we go. So there's the response. Here's the copy of it. It's the same thing. And there it is. There's our object. Contents is an object. It's got two properties with those values. So we're able to extract from that response the contents of the JSON file. All right, so that was the JSON response. For the image response, I want to take a local image. So I'm going to pick an image from my file system, and I'm going to load that and then use that in my response. So let's say document create element input. We need to have uh, one of the file inputs. So 
So there's my input object. Input.type is going to be file. Input.accept will set this to image slash star. So it's going to be able to load any image. And then I'll add an event listener to it to say when it's changed, what I want to do is build my response, get the file. So I've got same variable name here, bad practice, but just to be clear about it, um, input, I'm going to take the event target, which is going to be this input. So this is my file input. And then the file that I'm going to be working with, I don't have to create, I don't have to use new file like I did up here. In this version, the file is going to come from the files array inside of my input. So I want the first file that comes out of that. And then same as we did before, new response. And then in the options, we've got a status status text and headers if we have or need any headers and I'm going to use the same ones as before we've got content type which will be file.type and content length file.size and the name is going to come from this file whatever this file is right here Okay, so our response, we now have a response. If we want to make a copy, we can do that again as well, exact same way we did before. Response.clone. And I'm missing a bunch of characters here. And this has to be assigned. There we go. So response is my response object. That's what I'm cloning right here to get a copy. So that'll show me what it is. And if I want to get the image from the response, again, we'll make this an async function so that we can copy dot blob with an image. When you're fetching an image, you can't use JSON to extract the contents. So blob will go to the body of our response object that we created right here. And it retrieves this with the understanding that it's binary data. So this is binary data. If I wanted to then add it to say an ahref, what we need to do is we need to use url.createObjectURL and pass the blob into that. And we can look at that. Oh, yeah, I kind of skipped a step over here. Uh, the file picker dialog, I can't just tell it to run. That would be a security risk. So people could be tricked into loading files. Um, so we do have to have something happen here before we can call this and actually create the input and then cause it to click. So we're going to inside of here, we'll say document dot um, body at event listener. So we'll listen for a click anywhere on the body. When that happens, that is when we will do this. So the user clicks on the page and that will open up our dialogue. So we click somewhere on the body. There's our dialogue. Oh, okay, made a mistake here. And that would be right here with the blob. This is an asynchronous. The reason that we put async here was so that we could do the await. There we are. Oh, not there. I'm inside of another function right here. So this is what we need to do. This is the function containing this piece of code. We're inside this function. So this is the one that needs to be made asynchronous. There we go. Click on the body. 
There it is. Double click. And there's our blob URL. And that's really all there is to making these custom response objects. So you can generate files, create a file object, and put that into the response, or you can select local files. So we can have an input type equals file, lets users pick files, you take those and you pass those into the response object. And then regardless of the kind it is, you can always clone it, make another copy. So if you need to do multiple things with the file, you can make multiple copies of that. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Hope that helps you with your service workers. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I will have some more videos coming up on um, taking things in and out of the cache, in and out of the local file system, putting them on the screen, saving them different places. So I will have some more videos coming up on that. And as always, thanks for watching.